dear children how are you all i hope you all are in the best of your health and enthusiastic towards your studies children today we are going to discuss part 1 of chapter number 10 of class 9th science that is gravitation so first of all let us see what we already know we know that when an object drops from a certain height it falls downwards what is force what are laws of motion how all the planets move around the sun we know the answers of these questions as we learned these topics in previous chapter we know that some force is responsible here so now let us see what we are going to discuss in this chapter gravitation universal law of gravitation free fall to calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity that is small g motion of object under the influence of gravitation mass and weight and weight of the object on moon so we are going to discuss all these topics in detail first of all let's start with gravitation while playing when a ball thrown upwards it reaches to a certain height and then it fall towards the earth can you guess why this happen let's take one another example why do fruits always fall to earth or why does water from any source fall downwards the answer to all these questions is gravitational force sir isaac newton explained that all objects fall down because of the force of attraction of the earth this force of attraction is called the gravitational force of the earth or gravity it means the earth attracts all the bodies towards its center when we throw a ball upwards it reaches to a certain height and then fall on the ground due to gravitational force dear children because of the gravitational force only our earth moves around the sun and the moon which revolves around our earth is also due to this gravitational force dear children to move a body in a circular path some external force has to be applied on it this external force which moves a body in a circular path is called centripetal force this force always applied to inward direction earth's gravitation force act as centripetal force and is responsible for the circular motion of the earth around the sun similarly the gravitational force between earth and the moon is responsible for the motion of moon around the earth dear children can you guess what is the centripetal force let's find out circular motion is a motion of an object around it in a circular path any object when moves in a circular path with constant speed its direction of motion changes at every point due to change in direction there is change in velocity and due to change in velocity acceleration occurs the force due to which acceleration produced is always applied towards center and this force is called centripetal force and is measured 
by a formula F is equals to ma. More is the mass of the object, more will be the centripetal force. And if more centripetal force is applied on object, more will be the speed of the object on that circular path. Dear children, if an object is moving in a circular path having small radius, then centripetal force applied on that object will be more because there is a rapid change in the direction of objects. It means the magnitude of centripetal force depends upon speed of the object, mass of the object and the radius of the circular path on which that object is moving. We can find out the magnitude of centripetal force by the formula F is equals to mv squared by r. Here m is the mass of the object, v is the velocity of the object and r is the radius of that circular path on which the object is moving. Dear children, let's see an example. Motion of a moon around the earth is due to centripetal force. But from where this centripetal force has come? The centripetal force provided by the force of attraction of the earth. If there were no such force, the moon would pursue a uniform straight line motion. Dear children, now let us learn universal law of gravitation. Gravitation force occur between those two objects which has some mass and they are situated at a specific distance from each other. Earlier we have talked about the example of falling apple. It is seen that a falling apple is attracted towards the earth. Does the apple attract the earth? It is clear here that both the objects exert some force on each other. Because according to Newton's third law of motion, for every action there is equal and opposite reaction. So apple also applies an equal force on earth, means apple does attract the earth. So now question is that which one becomes more accelerated, apple or earth? According to Newton's second law of motion, applied force is equal to the product of mass of the object and its acceleration. It is given as F is equals to MA. Now according to this formula, if we calculate value of A, then we will get A is equals to F by M. So for a given force, acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. It means if an object has more mass, then its acceleration will be very less. So, as we all know that the mass of an apple is negligibly small compared to that of the earth. Hence, the acceleration produced in the apple is much greater than the acceleration produced in the earth. Hence, we see the apple falling towards the earth rather than the motion of earth towards the apple. To study all these aspects, all these concepts in a better way, we study universal law of gravitation. Let two objects A and B lie at a distance D from each other. Distance D is measured from the centers of the object. Let 
the mass of object A is capital M and object B is small of M. Size of object A is greater than the object B. So according to universal law of gravitation, every object in this universe attracts every other object with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses means F directly proportional to capital M into small m and this force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers means F inversely proportional to 1 by t square. The direction of the gravitational force between two bodies is along the line joining their centers. By combining these two formulas, we get F proportional to capital M into small m by d square. If the values of the product of masses of the object increases, then the force will also increases. But if the distance between the object increases, then the applied force will decreases. When we remove the proportionality sign, we got a proportionality constant that is capital G. Dear children, capital G is the constant of proportionality which is known as universal gravitational constant. By multiplying crosswise, we get FD square is equals to G capital M into small m and the value of G we got is G is equals to FD square by capital M into small m. The value of capital G was found out by Henry Cavendish by using a sensitive balance. The accepted value of capital G is 6.673 into 10 raised to the power minus 11. And by using the units of force, distance and mass, we can obtain the SI unit of capital G that is universal gravitational constant that is Newton meter square per kilogram square. Now let us learn the importance of the universal law of gravitation. The universal law of gravitation successfully explained several phenomena which were believed to be unconnected. This is the force that binds us to the earth. This is the force which is responsible for the motion of moon around the earth. Motion of planets around the sun occurs due to this force. And this force is responsible for occurring of tides due to the moon and the sun. Dear children, now let us study free fall. We know that whenever objects fall towards the earth, it is attracted by the earth. And this attraction force is gravitational force, which earth applies on the objects. Imagine you drop a stone and a cotton ball of similar size from a definite height. Can you guess which object reaches earlier than other? Yes, we can see that the stone reaches earlier than the cotton ball. We can conclude that heavier objects falls rapidly than the lighter objects. It means heavier objects moves with more acceleration. But Galileo explained that all objects either heavy 
or light can reach the ground at same time then why the stone and the cotton ball reaches at different times on ground for this galileo explained that lighter objects feels greater frictional force due to air than the heavier object this was proved right in an experiment conducted by robert boyle he dropped a coin and a feather in a jar whose air was removed by using a vacuum pump he found that both coin and feather reached the bottom of the jar at the same time so it was proved that in vacuum all the bodies take same time to reach the ground when dropped from the same height simultaneously this does not depends on their masses but in the presence of air due to air's resistance some objects reaches earlier than the others with this concept acceleration due to gravity is also related let's learn acceleration due to gravity whenever objects fall towards the earth there is no change in the direction of motion of the object but due to earth's attraction there will a change in the magnitude of the velocity of the, that object any change in velocity involves acceleration and this acceleration is due to the earth's gravitational force therefore this acceleration is called the acceleration due to the gravitational force of earth or acceleration due to gravity it is denoted by small g the value of small g is different at poles and at equator value of acceleration due to gravity that is small g depends on shape of the earth height above the surface of the earth and depth inside the surface of the earth children you will be surprised to know that the value of small g also different at earth and at moon the acceleration due to gravity on earth is 6 time more than the acceleration due to gravity at the moon the unit of acceleration due to gravity is same as the acceleration that is meter per second square children let us calculate the value of small g that is acceleration due to gravity according to second law of motion f is equals to ma and we know that here is acceleration involved in falling objects due to the gravitational force and is denoted by small g so the force f is equals to m g according to universal law of gravitation the gravitational force between earth and body is F is equals to G capital M into small m by d square. Here, capital M is the mass of the earth, small m is the mass of the object, and small d is the distance between earth and the object. Let an object be on or near the surface of the earth. So the distance d. will be equal to capital r that is radius of the earth so by replacing small d by r formula will be f is equals to capital g capital m into small m by r square by using f is equals to mg we got mg is equals to capital g m into small m by r square by cutting here small m to small m the value of small g will be 
small g is equals to capital G capital M by R square. To calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity, we should put the values of capital G, capital M and capital R in the formula. Value of capital G is 6.7 into 10 raise to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. Value of capital M is 6 into 10 raise to the power 24 kilogram. And the value of capital R, that is radius of earth, is approximately 6.4 into 10 raise to the power 6 meters. By placing the values in the formula, we get small g is equals to 9.8 meter per second square. Thus, the value of acceleration due to gravity of the earth is 9.8 meter per second square. The earth is not a perfect sphere as the radius of the earth increases from the poles to the equator the value of small g becomes greater at the poles than at the equator but for most calculations we take small g to be more or less constant on or near the earth now let us learn about motion of objects under the influence of gravitational force as value of small g is constant near the earth, all the equations for the uniformly accelerated motion of objects become valid with acceleration a replaced by small g. Thus, equations are, first equation is v is equals to u plus at, that will be v is equals to u plus gt, second is S is equals to ut plus half a t square. It is now S is equals to ut plus half g t square. And third equation is v square is equals to u square plus 2 a s. And it will convert into v square is equals to u square plus 2 g s. Here, u and v are the initial and final velocities and s is the distance covered in time t. By applying these equations, we will take acceleration to be positive when it is in the direction of motion. The acceleration will be taken as negative when it opposes the motion. Let's understand it with an example. If a car falls off a edge and drops on the ground in 0.5 seconds, then find out the speed of the car on striking the ground. For simplifying the calculation, we take small g is equals to 10 meter per second square. Here, time is equals to 0.5 second. Initial velocity u is equals to 0 meter per second because car was at rest at that time. And acceleration due to gravity small g is equals to 10 meter per second square. Now, here as you are seeing that car is coming towards the earth means the acceleration is here in the direction of motion we will take value of small g positive here by applying equation of motion v is equals to u plus gt and by putting the values v is equals to 0 plus 10 into 0 0.5 that is v is equals to 5 meter per second means the speed of the car on striking the ground is 5 meter per second. Similarly, 
Let us see one more example. If we say that an object is thrown vertically upwards, here in this case acceleration will be taken negative because it opposes the motion here. So we will take value of small g in negative here. Dear children, now let us see mass and weight of an object. Children, we usually think that mass and weight are similar units. Is it correct? No, it's not. Let's find out the difference between them. Mass of a body is the amount of matter contained in the body. Now, let us imagine two situations. In first case, first object is placed on the surface of the earth and in second case, that object is placed on the surface of moon. Does the mass of the object differ in both situations? To find the answer, I have one more question. Does the amount of matter is similar in both cases? Yes, from this we can conclude that mass of the body does not change either it is present on earth or on moon. When the object is taken from one place to another, its mass remains same. SI unit of mass is kilogram. Children, we know that mass of object is the measure of its inertia. So, greater the mass, greater is the inertia. So, mass is the amount of matter present in an object, but weight of a body is the force with which it is attracted towards the earth. Means, the force of attraction of the earth on an object is the weight of the object. W is equals to m small g. From this formula, it is clear that weight of an object depends on the mass and the acceleration due to gravity. And as you all know that value of small g is different on earth and on moon, value of small g is 6 times more than that of the moon. So due to difference in the value of small g at these places, weight of the object will also vary. So we can conclude that mass of the object remains same at every place but weight of the object varies from place to place. Dear children, now let us try to find out the weight of an object on the moon. We have learned that the weight of an object on the earth is the force with which the earth attracts the object. In the same way, the weight of an object on the moon is the force with which the moon attracts the object. The mass of the moon is less than that of the earth. Due to this, the moon exerts lesser force of attraction on objects. Let the mass of an object be small m and its weight on the moon be w. Let the mass of the moon be capital M small m and its radius be capital R small m. By applying the universal law of gravitation, the weight of the object on the moon will be Wm is equals to capital G capital M small m into small m by capital R m square. Let the weight of the same object on the earth be We. The mass of the earth is capital M and its radius is capital R. By applying the universal law of gravitation, the weight of the object on the earth will be We is equals to capital G capital M into small m by R square. 
by placing the real values of earth and moon's masses and the radius we got wm by we is equals to 1 by 6 weight of the object on the moon is equals to 1 by 6 of the weight on the earth it means the weight of the object on moon is 1 sixth the weight of the object on earth so dear children let's take an example if an object's weight 10 newton on the surface of earth what would be its weight on the surface of moon as we know weight of the object on moon is equals to weight of the object on earth by 6 so wm is equals to 10 by 6 newton and wm is equals to 1.67 newtons thus the weight of the object on the surface of moon would be 1.67 newton dear children now let us see what we have learned in this chapter the law of gravitation states that the force of attraction between any two objects is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them this law applied to objects anywhere in the universe such a law is said to be universal the value of acceleration due to gravity small g is equals to 9.8 meter per second square the force of gravity decreases with altitude it also varies on the surface of earth decreasing from poles to equator the weight of a body is the force with which the earth attracts it dear children now let us discuss some questions i hope you know the answers first question name the force responsible for the motion of moon around the earth frictional force or centripetal force yes you are right the force responsible for the motion of moon around the earth is centripetal force second question the weight of the object is the attraction force between the earth and the object is it true or false yes it is true the weight of the object is the attraction force between the earth and the object third question what will be the value of acceleration of an object which is thrown upwards positive or negative yes the value will be negative because the motion of the object is in opposite to the acceleration question number 4 find out the weight of the object on the surface of earth if its mass is 10 kg yes as we all know that w weight is equals to m into g here mass given 10 kg and small g is equals to 9.8 meter per second square so w is equals to 10 into 9.8 that is 98 newton so the weight of that object is 98 newton so dear children here we come to an end of this chapter i hope you find the chapter very interesting now you are able to understand the difference between capital g and small g now you are able to understand the values of these things now we know that why different natural phenomena are going on how earth is moving around the sun how moon is moving around the earth so you all keep studying science Keep knowing interesting facts about science. Stay safe, stay healthy. We will soon meet with a new chapter. Good day.